Item number SCP-1483, Object Class Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. Only minimal security measures are necessary to contain SCP-1483 due to both the nature of the property and the difficulty in accessing it. All entry and exit to Universe B-10208-Alpha-1488 is to be regulated by by Falcon and Dust Side Stations, located on both sides of the transition zone. In the event of aggressive invasion of baseline by SCP-1483, the emergency charges of uh, Dust Side Station are to be detonated, cutting off access to SCP-1483. All personnel assigned to the Foundation Embassy or any other site within the boundaries of SCP-1483 may only be held accountable to the provisions of their basic operations charter by the Overseer Board. In all matters, personnel are to be held to the laws of SCP-1483 and all provisions of the agreements made with the Throne of the Empress and the Imperial Institute of Paranatural and Esoteric Study, henceforth referred to as IPS. Foundation sites within SCP-1483 are considered a semi-autonomous district of operations under the Exploratory Research Provisions, O5 Special Order 108A. The position of Commissioner has been instituted with Level 5 clearance to oversee Foundation operations within SCP-1483. The individual holding the position has no authority outside of this jurisdiction. Description SCP-1483 is the continent of Antarctica, as confirmed by local maps and day-night cycles, located in Universe B-102208-Alpha-1483 and entered by 1483 means of passing through a small crevice. Note, approximately 1.7 meters across, located in the Queen Alexandra mountain range. Coordinates redacted. The transition is classified as a SSUIS-2, Universal Overlap. SCP-1483's environment is most notable in its overall lack of surface ice. The majority of the continent consists of a central BWH desert region interspersed with seasonal rivers and lakes. Vegetation is sparse and primarily consists of coastal forests and scrubland. Agriculture is carried out during the summer months through a complex sense of irrigation canals and large plantations, taking advantage of glacial melt. The average summer temperature is approximately 35 degrees Celsius, with winter temperatures reaching negative 35 degrees Celsius. The cause of this temperature and the implications on the rest of the plant's climate are unknown at this time. Many species of native life bear no resemblance to baseline species, and several has been specially bred or otherwise modified by SCP-1483-1. There is no indication of biological cross-contamination between SCP-1483 and baseline. Similarities are the result of convergent evolution. The sapient inhabitants of SCP-1483 are designated as SCP-1483-1, Homo Antarcticus. The exact lineage of the species is unknown at this time, though the last shared ancestor with Homo sapiens is considered to be the B-102208-1483 instance of Homo heidelbergensis. A single subspecies and numerous racial variants exist, as well as several clades formed by the applications of specific anomalous properties to certain populations. See Addendum 2 for a listing of major clades of SCP-1483-1. SCP-1483 is currently unified under the Third Antarctic Empire. Note, a full direct translation of the government's full title is Third or granddaughter domain of the south, beneath the sun, upon the throne of bones. A matriarchal imperialist monarchy overseeing 17 dependent provinces. Provincial governments are answerable to a central regulatory bureaucracy, 
operating after their capital. The current imperial government was founded in 1526 CE and is the third such ruling body to unify the continent. Records prior to year 221 553 CE, these states marked the restructuring of the bureaucratic structure and standardization of the language after the loss of the Hall of Records are both rare and generally inaccurate. The Empire's technology level is roughly equivalent to that of 20th century baseline, with certain exceptions. Nuclear, geothermal, and solar power are more prevalent energy sources than fossil fuels. While communication and aerospace technologies lag behind the baseline significantly, while telecommunications and primitive computing systems are extent only within developed areas, the majority of the population of SCP-1483 resides in urban centers connected by a train network or large plantation settlements. Most settlements contain subterranean districts for inhabitation during the winter months. Mainstream imperialist culture is highly stratified, female-dominated class system. Though regional variants or throwbacks to older cultural structures exist in outlying areas, the existence of anomalous objects is common knowledge within the Empire, officially dealt with by the Imperial Institute of Paranatural and Esoteric Study and Military Force as necessary. The Foundation is treated as a public ward of the RIPES. The Foundation's presence and purpose in SCP-1483 is tolerated by Imperial authorities. However, the Foundation is limited to operations within authorized areas. Access to sealed records, specific information regarding items under the institution's control, and any information deemed sensitive by the Empire or IIPES is likewise limited. See Addendum 1 for a listing of major anomalous objects under Imperial control. When questioned about regions outside borders of SCP-1483, an Imperial liaison responded, The dealings of savages and their rotting lands are of no concern to us. Do not waste your time asking after them. Addendum 1 The IIPES has catalogued over 3,000 anomalous items and entities since its founding during the Second Empire era. Note 2230 or 632 CE of note is the presence of certain patterns within anomalous items that did not exist within the baseline, with some correlation with SCP-1483-C. The Institute's philosophy towards anomalous items is focused primarily on destruction of threats, study, and public preparation. Approximately 500 items are actively contained or monitored by the Institute at this time. The most notable of these include SCP 1483 A, Sinoc Thuor, the remains of a massive unknown organism, much of which currently serving as the framework of the Imperial Palace. Estimates of SCP 1483 A's initial size have indicated that the creature weighed in excess of 10,000 tons. The entity features heavily on local folklore, abide in generally unproven and often contradictory accounts. What can be said with certainty is that SCP-1483-A's death led to the formation of the First Empire. SCP-1483-B, The Moors of Esser, a series of UMUID-1 universal overlaps which will randomly manifest across SCP-1483, these overlaps are visible, though intangible, appearing as dark clouds at ground level. Their appearance is accompanied by the manifestation of 3 to 20 SCP 1483 1F, which will consume all life in the path and will persist for 1 to 6 hours. Periods of manifestations vary between 15 seconds and up to 45 days and an average of 10 to 12 hours. SCP 1483 C The Blessings of Equum an overall term applied to 18 known schools of occult practice. Folklore claims that these schools originated with a series of objects used to kill SCP-1483-A, though this has not been confirmed. 
Information regarding SCP-1483-C is highly regulated by the Institute, though it is known that forms of SCP-1483-C have been used in modification of the populace, and that the 18 schools are practiced throughout the Empire. Addendum 2. Notable clades of SCP-1483-1 include 1a. The Summer Court the majority population of SCP of 1483-1, generally similar to baseline humanity, though more resistant to extreme temperatures and possessing an overall more broad build. 1b, the Black Court, a subspecies of SCP-1483-1 specialized to survive outside in winter conditions by means of a thick layer of body fat and fur, incapable of reproducing with other clades, 1B traditionally takes over most facets of public life, including the Senate, military, and administrative positions during the winter months. Summer months are spent in nomadic communes. 1C Menders Members of the religious hierarchy of the Empire, possessing a second pair of arms, with segments of a seemingly decorative metallic exoskeleton encircling the limbs and torso, capable of dispelling instances of SCP-1483-B 1D Watchers Upon All The rarest clade of SCP-1483-1 Generally found serving in special positions under direct instruction of the Empress or leading bands of 1C 1D specimens stand up approximately 2.5 meters in height possess two additional pairs of arms and have more extensive iterations of the 1C exoskeletons Iris and Scara of the eyes are completely black. Local myths claim that 1D have received all blessings of SCP-1483-C. 1E Minor Clades This classification includes all minor clades native to outlying provinces that have not yet been studied in detail by the Foundation. 1F Feastlings, entities that will manifest alongside SCP-1483-B instances. SCP-1483-1-F will appear as initiated SCP-1483-1 and are, and are singularly violent in behavior, attacking and consuming any nearby organisms. Addendum 3 A timeline of Foundation involvement of SCP-1483 is as follows. Beep, 1912. First evidence of SCP-1483's existence can be traced back to the journal of one Beep, a member of the British Antarctic Expedition, 1910, under Robert Falcon Scott. Beep claimed to have seen dark-skinned humanoid figures emerging from a rift. He was unable to make contact with the entities, but nonetheless provided a detailed description of the figures. Beep did not alert any other members of the expedition about the event. Beep 1989 Beep's journal was discovered from a Marshall Carter and Dark auction house. It is catalogued without study. Beep 1991 The journal is removed from storage by Dr. Edith Yard. Plans for an expedition are made. Beep, 1994. A reconnaissance force consisting of Strike Team Iota 15 makes the first foray into SCP-1483. 058 pushes for further exploration of SCP-1483 and make contact with the natives. Beep, 1996. A second reconnaissance mission is made by Iota 15. Beep. 1997, the third and final reconnaissance mission is made by IOTA-15. Beep, 1998, the Yard Expedition makes contact with the Imperial Government for the first time. Beep, 2000, the Foundation Embassy is founded in the Imperial Capital of Woodwell. Official agreements of the occupation are signed by Empress Otmo Jian VI detailing the rights and functions of Foundation personnel within SCP-1483 and procedure for communication with the outside. Beep 2000, Dr. Edith Lord is appointed to the position of Commissioner. Beep 2001, Dustside Station is built at a point of transition. Beep 
2002, Falcon Station is built on a baseline point of transition. Beep, 2004, Site 1483 Alpha is built in Seguin Province. Beep, 2007, Site 1483 Beta is built in Grey Mountain Province. Beep, 2009, Site 1483 Gamma is built in Esso Province. Beep, 2010, Dr. Edith Yard dies due to respiratory infection. Beep, 2011, Dr. Thomas Bailey is appointed as commissioner.